Okay, so I wanted to make a video on uh, this quad and the uh, boss plow. Mostly for the boss plow, not so much the quad. Even though there's not that many touring uh, videos out there. There's a couple of good ones, but uh, they're old and um, we could use that too. Maybe I'll go into that in another video, but... Um, Today, I want to do something with the boss plow because there's no videos on that either. There's a commercial that boss puts out advertising this and they just go go about it in a very <laughs> commercial way. And then there's um, like a, just another marketing spot that they do. They have uh, this plow on a sportsman and they have it on i think it's on a sportsman actually i don't even remember but then next to it they have it on a side by side like a mini uh a light utv mid-size utv and he goes into it and all that stuff but you gotta remember it's a boss representative and it's conflict of interest so like you know what they saying so i'm gonna give you my opinion a consumer i haven't used it yet because i just got it like two weeks ago and it hasn't snowed i'm in new york city but uh, I'll give you my my opinion on the mount, the quality of it, and, you know, the controls and stuff like that. As far as how good it is, I think it's going to be fucking awesome. I mean, it's boss. You know what I mean? This is no Mickey Mouse bullshit brand. The mount, they show you the quad pull up. You pull into it. It hooks in. You um, you push up on the um the motor you know the hydraulic motor and then uh you just lock it in okay that i mean that that, that is what you have to do but it doesn't go that easy okay you gotta what happens is the quad the hooks that are on the quad that hook onto the mount that hook onto the uh plow mount so in other words you have a mount that boss puts on the quad, and then their hooks, they hook into the plow. And in order for them to get hooked in, you gotta, you can't just drive the quad in because those hooks are actually higher than the mount that the hooks hook into. So you gotta actually go forward to it, up to the thing as close as possible, and then you have to get off, put the quad in neutral, and then you have to hold the quad. I use it like I hold like the winch cable, right? And with one hand, keep in mind, this unit is, the uh, the mount, the uh, plow is 245 pounds. With one hand, you just have to pull it up about a half inch, an inch, just to get it seated on the hooks on the quad. And once you get that on, you push up on the motor, like they show in the video. And then the next problem is sliding the pins over. When you push the motor up, the pins are supposed to go in one at a time. I'm mean, uh, at the same time. Just click, click, and now the thing is locked in, right? What happens is one of them usually gets in and one of them doesn't. And it, the problem actually got worse for me because I had I ended up putting on coil spaces, um, like for the shocks, those those rubber things that Polaris se uh, sell, sells. And when you put those, because what happens is you get drop. When you lift the plow up, you get drop. When you put those coil spaces in, the quad lifts even even higher. So now the problem I just described about how the hooks don't line up, it, it, it becomes even worse. And they also, you could also tighten the adjusters underneath the springs. There's four, adjust, four adjustments. When you buy a sportsman, they come it comes to you in the in the softest suspension adjustment what you got to do to to make it tighter is is use the tool that they give you which sucks use that tool and you turn it it's four clicks when you do it you got to jack your your your, uh, your quad up all the way you want you want the wheel just above the ground you you want those springs completely decompressed because um, they're tight and they're thick springs. Like Can Am, if you look at Can Am springs, they're thin and there's less coils to them. There's, they go around the shocks, they go around less. So you could probably squeeze these things in on a Can Am. And the other models, I don't know. But Polaris, you absolutely must jack the thing up to spread those springs out. And you got to use soap and water on the, spring, on the uh, coils. 
just take a little soap and water in a in a in a in a bowl dip the coil uh dip the spaces in so they get some of that sleek soap on there and then you could you could throw them in it's actually very easy if you do it like that if you don't use soap and water you're gonna struggle i tried it you get about half of it in and then and then there's just too much rubber rubbing on the, the springs there's too much of a uh, restriction once it's on it's like i don't really feel the need of getting it off except why you'd want to take it off in the middle of a storm in the middle of work is if you got to use your winch i'm not happy about this the motor covers the winch i have a 3500 pound winch on there with the uh the upgrade where the winch stops automatically when the when the uh when the magnet is sensed you just so you don't rip your rope or retract your hook into your system I got a really nice uh, winch. I love this thing. And when it sits behind the motor, it's blocked up. You you can't even access it. You you got to struggle to get your hand in there to access it. And that's if you, if it's if the weather's nice. If it, there's snow in there, packed snow, and your hands are cold, you're not getting that hook out. And it's probably frozen in there. Now I I pull the winch out a little bit and I hook it on this string right here. Now I have access to it. I, I'm not going to have a direct line of pull because I'm not going to lower this because it's too much of a bitch to lower it because those pins are locked up. Anybody that knows anything about winching, you always want to have a direct line of pull. Yeah, you can use change of direction in in a in a system, but the line that's coming out of your winch should be straight. If you're on the angle, you're losing strength, you're putting crazy stress where, where stress isn't designed to be, and you, you, know, you might have uh, equipment failure. And these bolts right here, these two bolts on the bottom, this is where this, the trip springs are located. I believe you just turn this bolt and you're increasing the pressure of the spring because what's, what's, what you're doing is you're bringing the, uh, when you turn the nut, I'm sorry, when you turn the nut, you're bringing the bolt closer to the quad and you're stretching the spring tighter so it doesn't trip as easy. And this is just a look at the motor, everything underneath the cover, just to give you a, a quick look. The uh, rope under there is only there to prevent that the whole motor from tilting down because I was like trying to get to the front of it. That's why it's there. And here it is, and here's the controls. I just wanted to show you how it is, how close your hand is to it. And uh, I have kind of big hands. And I got to reach a little bit to get to it. But, I mean, that's as close as you're going to get. And here's a clip of me just moving the controls around a couple of times so you can see how, how it, you can see the action of it and you can listen to it and all that jazz. As for the blade being raised and how much it drops the front of the quad here are the measurements now this is all with the spring suspension on a loosest setting and the um, coil space is not in so this is without them in okay the blade is straight and the blade is down from the storage compartment down to the ground measuring right in between the um, front wheel in the middle of the front wheel down to the ground the measurement is 36 and one quarter inches when you lift the blade up and keep it straight and in scoop the height is now 34 and three quarters of three quarter inches so you have an inch and a half of drop when you put the spaces in 
and the plow is not attached. The quad lifts up to 37 and 3 quarters. You attach the plow. Blade is straight, blades down. It drops to 36 3 quarters. That's just attaching the, uh, the plow. That's not even lifting it, just attaching it. Blade up and straight. It's now 35 and 3 quarters. Blade up and in scoop. It's 35 and a half. That's an inch and a quarter drop. So by putting the spaces in, you're gaining only one quarter of an inch. However, you're tightening up, you're stiffening up the suspension so you have less likely to have drop when you go off curbs and stuff like that because you have a tight suspension. So initially, just when it's static, when, it's, when, the, when the quad is just there not doing anything, you're only getting that extra quarter of an inch. But keep in mind, and you really can't measure it, it's when you're moving and when you're doing things and you're driving and you go back and forth, it's going to be less bouncy. And you is very, very likely to bottom out without the spaces. At least this is my first opinion without um, using it, you know, to, to, to plow yet. So those are the numbers. And guys, I got a question. Anybody that has information on this, please help me. Because I really, like, I don't know anything about this shit. And I ask everybody. And, well... This is the deal. I got a lot of shit hooked up on the, on my quad, right? Lights and hand warmers and all sorts of shit. I want to get a second battery to power <clears throat> to power my accessories. Maybe not all of them, maybe some of them. I would like to put all my lights on my uh all my extra lights, not not the headlights and you know. I want to put all my lights my hand warmer, my thumb warmer. I got a horn up on this bitch. I want to put every all of those things on a second battery. And here's why. These fucking quads have baby batteries in them. It's like they're so temperamental. If I got the quad on and I, you know, when you're plowing snow, you're on and off, on and off, on and off. You're talking to people, you're shoveling, you're doing something, you stop, you want, you want to check out what's underneath the snow. You don't want to break up their fucking pavers. You're on and off the thing all the time, and you're constantly stopping the, uh, uh, killing the engine and and starting it uh, starting it up again. So it's like you don't always have you. you sometimes you just turn the turn the engine off, but the key goes back into the on position. And if it's daytime, your lights might be on. It's very very easy for this to happen. It's not like you're leaving your headlights on in a car where you, you, it lights the whole block up. You see it. It's very very easy. And anyone that knows what I'm talking about. Um, anybody has quads knows what I'm talking about. And I come back, I got my real light on, real light, one single light. It's on for two minutes. I go to start the quad up and it's like, and then it starts up, but it's struggling and that's two minutes on. Now, if I had it four minutes on, I had a dead battery and there I am in the middle of a blizzard with a dead battery. So what do I have to do? To hook up a second battery, an adjunct battery, okay? Okay, I can't put a bigger battery in and replace my first one because there's no fucking room up there, as you saw. And, you know, chances are the bigger battery, the better battery is going to be physically bigger. There might be one that's smaller or the same size with, like, more cells. and I don't know. That's what I'm asking. But... I'm thinking it needs to be a physically bigger battery. I have plenty of room for a second battery in the back of the quad underneath the seat. Simple a piece of angle iron, mount it, done. What do I need? Somebody mentioned um, I'm going to need a different regulator because how's, how's this battery going to get juice? If it works off of the first regulator, the, the, the first regulator... The stock regulator isn't going to be isn't going to be able to charge both batteries. So in other words, it'll, it'll be able to charge both batteries, but I'll be pulling from them faster than that could charge the both of them. So what do you do? Do you put a second regulator in? How does this whole how does this whole thing work? You know, I don't know anything about this shit. All I know is I want more juice. I want to know that if I leave my headlights on in my car, it'll probably take five hours before my fucking battery dies. Maybe four hours. My interior lights, I've left them on accidentally. 17, 18 hours. I come back, I have a fucking full battery in the, in the, in the, in the morning. It's not a problem. Now, this doesn't happen a lot. I don't want you to think I'm a, I'm a screwball, but 
it's exactly why I'm why I want to do this is so I don't get caught because we make mistakes. We're human beings. It's so easy to leave your lights on, walk away for two minutes, and I don't want to come back and have a dead battery. If you come back five hours later, you have a dead battery. Shame on you. I don't I don't blame you. But come on, two minutes. These batteries are underpowered, and even even without all the accessories on them, because even when it was stock, it was still like that. You know, even before I put the hand warmers and the thumb warmer and this and that and that. Just one little real light. It's a fucking a tiny, tiny real light. If that thing... Oh, and that's another thing too. When you want to turn the engine over, you got to have like... For the most part, you need to have all your accessory stuff off. I want to... Every time I turn my quad on and off, I don't want to have to shut everything down. Like, all right, I'm going to shut my quad off, off... And then light off, light off, light off, light off, light off, hand warmer off, hand warmer off, thumb warmer off. That's bullshit. I just want to turn it off and turn it back on and have full power. You know what I'm saying? I mean, maybe I'm a cunt and this is what I want. Who the fuck knows? But this is what I want. Guys, I know there's people out there. What do I have to do? Please. I'll get off my soapbox. Enjoy your day, guys. Thank you.